So today is the day that a certain group of people have been dreading for a long time. A country has now found a way to get around the U.S. dollar. Venezuela, for a very long time, suffered under the thumb of the United States prior to Hugo Chavez. And if you think I'm lying about that, I would like someone to explain this article. See, this article is from 21 December 1999. This is a full year before Chavez took power. And down here, talking about this flood from this rainstorm, they reveal a piece of information that is very hard to jive with the current mainstream media story. Many of the victims were poor people who built makeshift homes of tin, wood, and cinder block at the foot of Mount Avila, with a staggering 80% of the population of Venezuela living below the poverty level. Millions of Venezuelans from the countryside settled near urban centers in shanty towns constructed on mudslide-prone hills and ravines. See, this is the story they don't tell you about prior to Hugo Chavez. What he did was take the revenue from the oil industry and put it into the people and build homes and build roads and educate people for free. He brought the standard of living in that country up in 10 years farther than has ever happened in any South American country in history. It is an amazing story what happened, and that's why a certain group of people were very, very angry about their slave labor going away. You see, here's another article here talking about, and this goes back to 97 and 98, from Oil and Gas Journal, talking about what was happening in Venezuela during the late 90s. A 37% drop in Venezuela's 1998 oil export revenues to $11.1 billion from $17 billion in 97 is seriously hurting the economy. Now remember, three years before Chavez. Here it talks about the failed coup back in 92, but it talks about the massive problems they were having and how they tried to do it the, uh, the globalist way. PDVSA cut its budget over and over and over and over again. Here they talk about, well, on the positive side, the nation has undertaken reforms over the past several years, encouraging privatization and increased foreign investment, strengthening the banking sector and increasing foreign exchange reserves, meaning enriching a certain group of people. But of course slashing profits for the country. Here it literally even says it. Banking sector, making money. Foreign exchange, foreigners making tons of money. The people of Venezuela, making nothing. And that's why they had 80% under the poverty line prior to this. But people don't remember what was going on 20, 25 years ago. Most people can't remember, too. See, they rolled out a bunch of these stories last night trying to sway public opinion about this. And in this one, they tell you half the story about how the Ecuadorian president changed the passport rules. The reason he did that it used to be that you could get into Ecuador with just an ID card. Now you needed your, your passport, your visa. He realized that the people that were coming into his country were not all Venezuelans. There was an uptick in drug crimes and gang activity. And he's like, we know Venezuela is not known for this, but Colombia is. So now he's saying, okay. Show us that you're really a Venezuelan. And then all of a sudden, a whole bunch of people stop trying to come into the country. Imagine that. Of course, the mainstream media reporting that it's all Venezuelans when it's really Colombians. Because that's been the, that's been the paradigm. 
because of the giant frickin' drug war in Colombia that's been going on for 20, 25 years that everybody seems to have forgotten about. And then the issue in Brazil I find very uh, strangely timed, given our recent overtures into that region, and then all of a sudden we have this giant anti-immigration riot. The story here was that there were four alleged Venezuelans that uh, robbed a shopkeeper and uh, stole some money, and that's what set this thing off. But I want to, and I know this is going to probably send a bunch of people into uh, cognitive dissonance, but I want to illustrate something for you using this. One of the big pushbacks I got to this video, 663,000 views, was that uh, I underestimated the uh, ability of the folks who uh, live out in the farmland and their ability to take care of themselves even during hard times. Well, that's very true. You know, we used to have a term, yuppies, young urban professionals, they call them millennials, Gen X, Gen Y, whatever, that have grown up, you know, in the age where you didn't have to have all of those skills that the farm folk have. And that when things would fall apart in the big cities, the places that get the food delivered every single day and they don't know how to grow for themselves and do for themselves, that yeah, any little hiccup, they're going to be in a world of hurt. You're absolutely right about that. I was not saying go to the big cities. I was just saying be someplace or be in a, in a state that has a vast amount of resources so that during the rebuild, you know, you're going to be someplace where you're going to have a chance, a real good fighting chance to start over. Apply the logic, though, that you were using to attack my video to the issue in Venezuela. You see, when this hiccup happened, and there was a massive hiccup, there were people who were the equivalent of Gen Xers, Gen Y, yuppie, millennial, whatever you want to call them, that didn't know how to deal with it, and so... As a percentage, you're talking less than 1%, maybe pushing 1%, but that's still what's 1% of a country of 3 million people. Excuse me, a country of 30 million people. It's 300,000 people. Even 2% would be 600,000 people. And this, these are the numbers they're talking about. That, yeah, they had to bolt when everything fell apart. Even if you're saying a million people left Venezuela, that's what, 3%? I think we would have a much higher percentage in this country that would have a problem. So yeah, absolutely. There were, when this fell apart, when the um, currency spiraled out of control, people that were enslaved to a certain U.S. installed system by a certain group of people, I love the internet. Yeah, absolutely. They fled for Colombia, fled for Brazil, fled for Peru and Ecuador. But 95% of the people of Venezuela stuck it out and have stayed in the country. And we've shown the pictures before, and I'm not going to show them again, of these protesters against the government, and I've shown you over and over and over again that these people are nowhere near the skeletal zombies that have been starved for five years that you've been reported as having been created. It's just idiocy. But today, everything changes. Today, everything changes. And now, short of military intervention... Nothing is going to stop this. And if the U.S., it's put up or shut up time for those people, meaning those people. Because everybody thought during the last election cycle with this particular country that there would be some kind of an overthrow. They've tried to kill him twice and failed. So something will either happen very soon 
or there's going to be a domino effect around the world of countries following this exact model. Because it throws off the chains of the U.S. dollar. And here's the other thing that I find crazy, and I'll leave with this. Most of the people that have taken issue with me reporting on Venezuela this way would absolutely 100% agree with the idea of the U.S. fiat dollar, the fake petrodollar. Why is it so hard? What is, why is it such a stretch to believe that this little country down south of us that had these massive amount of gold, massive amount of oil, could possibly end up being the target of an operation like this? From the United States. It's not like we haven't done it before. It's not like we haven't invaded and sanctioned our way around the world before. Why would you all of a sudden believe the mainstream media when they tell you that it's about uh, evil socialism? When it seemed to not have any problem all the way up until 2013 or 2014 down there to the extent that all of the refugees created by the U.S.-backed and financed drug war in Colombia were going to Venezuela and taking advantage of the free food, free housing, free education, free health care. I don't remember anybody bitching about it from 2000 to 2012, about all of the vast amount of resources being spent on the Colombian refugees, a country that gets a half a billion dollars from the United States every single year and has for time in memoriam, not being able to take care of millions of its own citizens, putting that off on Venezuela all the way up until about 2015, when all of a sudden now Venezuela is the, uh, the enemy. This is a really great article from RT talking about the uh, U.S. operating active sanctions against 20 different countries in the world at the moment. Not including the invasions and the forces that are stationed around the world. I'd like to see a lot of those guys brought home. I'd like to see the military increased, but here at home. So we'll leave it there, 12 minutes, 24 seconds, but do understand there has been a major change in the world. And a certain group of people do not want you to know about it. And they are burying the story. But we'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.